Hello, this is part two of our meiosis video. The first video focused on the types of cells which are involved in meiosis and as, as well as the chromosome count and the functions of cells and which kinds of cells undergo which kinds of divisions. This video will focus more on the actual process of meiosis. Now, a lot of these steps are similar to mitosis steps, so I'm going to be going to them very quickly because hopefully you've watched the mitosis video before attempting to watch the meiosis video. So. Um, but basically meiosis starts the same way that the mitosis will start immediately after an S phase where the uh, germ cells will, uh, remember that meiosis only happens in germ cells according to the video we just watched in part one. Uh, germ cells will undergo um, an S phase and the synthesis phase will duplicate the DNA and as soon as the chromosomes duplicate they will start to coil up in a process that's similar to prophase one except a different thing will happen in prophase one. Those homologs we talked about in the previous video will line up against each other and actually exchange genetic information in a process that's called crossing over. So you will see these uh, pair chromologic structures called tetrads form. Tetrads because you see four sets of chromatids all getting together. At the same time, everything else that would happen normally during prophase when mitosis is happening, the nucleus is going away, the nucleus is going away, the spindle starts to form, chromosomes start to move towards the equator. And metaphase one, the chromosomes are at the equator, but instead of lining them all up, the tetrads remain intact, and instead of attaching to each each chromosome at opposite ends of the kinetic core, the tetrads are is what attaches. So one end of the tetrad versus the other end of the tetrad. So what that does is that it doing the uh, the anaphase one, instead of separating the chromatids, you separate the homologs. So uh, one of the homolog goes up, one of the one goes down. But notice that because of crossing over. The homolog that was up is not exactly the same original homolog you've had. So we'll talk about that and, and later on as well. So this is the very first meiosis stage, which will end with telophase again and the reconstruction of the nucleus and everything that happens at the end of normal telophase. Now, the light, making sure you realize the differences between this and the actual mitosis. In mitosis, you wouldn't have the separation of the uh, of the, uh, the formation of tetras and, and the crossing over or during this process. You wouldn't have the metaphase being the lining up of the tetras instead of being lining up of the chromosomes. And you wouldn't have the separation of homologs instead of separating the chromatids. So uh, it definitely has some differences. Now, uh, as soon as this is over, the telekinesis will finish and uh, the cell will split into two and then from now on you will see everything happening twice so now each of those cells which is now actually only half a cell we'll talk about that uh, later as well but now this this prophase will, will happen again except this time it will look a little more mit like mitosis and uh, each chromosome type will line up in the equator and then during the anaphase the sister chromatids will separate and form uh, separated single chromatids into um, new cells as well and then telophase will happen again and we establish the nucleus and all of that but if the uh, overall outcome is this is that you made half of a cell and it, we'll actually review that in more detail in a second mm -hmm. so I wanted to show you actual actual pictures of this process so you see the prophase one, metaphase one, anaphase one, uh, telophase and then you see prophase 1 starting, metaphase 1 starting, anaphase 1 starting, and telophase starting. So you can see how everything is actually doubled in these processes. So now that we finished talking about the stages of meiosis, which are very similar to mitosis stages with a few slight differences, which we will compare in a future video, um, we also wanted to find, talk about how this mitosis process actually causes the reduction of the chromosome numbers, all right? Now, before I do that, notice that during anaphase 1, you actually separate the homologs, which is something unique about meiosis. And remember that also unique is that during prophase 1, you have that crossing over business. Now, when you separate the homologs during anaphase 1, you're actually reducing the first time. Then, during meiosis 2, you separate chromatids, which is a process similar to what happens during mitosis. But now you're not separating all the chromatids. You're actually technically only separating half the chromatids that you could separate because the homologs were separated before. So uh, that will be a second reduction revision. Notice also 
that you start with a cell, or a regular 2N cell, just like you would with mitosis, and just like in mitosis, that will undergo the S phase, which will transform the 2N cell into an actual cell that is actually has two copies of that 2N cell. So I like to think of it as a 2N cell times 2. So you have twice the DNA there, right? Now, that's why you have these sister chromatids attached to the centromere because now each of those sister chromatids is basically the same copy as the other. So you have two types of, um, you have the, the type of a chromosome, but you have two copies of each type, but each copy is doubled. So you have actually four times the, D, the DNA code in this case. Now, doing anaphase one, you're going to separate those homologs. So now you no longer have two copies of each type. Technically, you only have one copy of each type. So now this became an N cell. But since each of these chromosomes carries two copies of the same thing, technically what you have is a doubled N cell. So a double N cell, which is not the same thing as a 2N cell. Remember, 2N refers to having two different copies of the same type of chromosome. This is basically the same chromosome twice. So it's not two different type copies of the same type all right now after a second division you're going to get that two end cells split in half and then each of the cells ends up as an end cell or a half a cell which is half of the diploid cell you have up here you have a haploid or a half cell here so instead of having two copies of each type of chromosome you end up with one copy of each type of chromosome and that's why meiosis is a reduction division. And basically that happens because between the divisions here, there is no interface. So interface usually happens at the end of the telophase. But in this case, you go prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, prophase again. And so since there is no interface, there is no S phase. And since there's no S phase, there's no synthesis. DNA is not copied. DNA is not duplicated, which means a second division cuts the DNA in half, which is what happens in the actual my, uh, mitos meiosis process. So this is how meiosis actually reduces the, the, the size of a cell to in half. And remember that you want this to happen because if it doesn't happen, well, your gametes will be 2N. And if your gametes are 2N and you get a 2N gamete and you combine with another 2N gamete, you make a 4N cell. So that would mean that every generation the DNA would double and eventually you would have too much DNA in the cell and cause too many problems. The cell size would not be enough and you also have problems with too much DNA confusing the cell and things like that. So this reduction division is fundamental for the fertilization process and for the formation of a new life form which is composed of half of each parent. So it's through meiosis that you make the gametes which are part of the sexual reproduction process which combines half of each being to make a whole new being and we're going to talk about that on when we do uh, sexual versus asexual reproduction on another video so on the next video we're going to be talking about the steps of meiosis which are unique to meiosis and how each of those steps as to the variation which is so special about eukaryotic sexual reproduction all right